Fields, and welcome back to another episode of Fitz Rupee Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Got a great one on one elite mod game here for you on the dusty terrain of Sewell Frontier. And before we get started, I've been getting quite a few questions about the elite mod. For one, if you have any questions at all, feel free to head over to Dow2Elite.com. I, of course, and Kaltos have been dressing that place up a bit. They've got some forums and things over there. And the installer is just super easy now. Don't even worry about my installation video. I'm going to take it down. All you have to do is download the installer. It takes care of everything for you and even puts a nice little shortcut on your desktop. And then you're good to go. So if you have any questions, anything like that at all, head over to that site. They've got everything lined up nice and easy for you. Also, if you're looking for more people to play, join I have horses set up the Maelstrom campaign, and that's a campaign comprised of different levels of players. So if you're looking for someone to play with and you see all these top players playing in Elite Mod, you're kind of kind of a little hesitant to join in on that. Join up with the Maelstrom campaign. It's a great way to meet some other players in your skill level and get some good games in. And other than that, oh, I know everyone's been clamoring for Grey Knights. Everyone wants to see Grey Knights. Well, I'll tell you what. You guys have to submit Grey Knight replays if you guys want to see some Green Knights on here. So, anyways, we've got the Green Knights over here. A couple of repeat offenders tonight. We've got Mr. Texanius over here as the Orc Warboss, one of my favorite Orc players. And Floyd as our atrocious Hive Tyrant on this side of the map playing the Red Team. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Not too many major changes here on the Elite mod for these two races. Just a few basic things. Synapse doesn't do knockback on retreat is one of the big ones. And the Tyranids in 2.0.5 have a new global which spawns a, summons a capillary tower which generates additional red and buffs all the troops around them. So maybe we'll be seeing that come in from Floyd. And orcs, well, they've got they've got a few different things. They got some flash kits, got the pain boy. We'll see what comes out on this map. Anyways, seeing a pretty Standard opening, got the double shooter boys, double termagants on both sides. No, sorry, that's a hormagon right there. So double hormagons playing a little different. Normally see the double termagants. Hopefully the extra melee is going to pay off. He's going to hope he can get those hormagons in range. They do have a better charge range in the elite mod, so they'll be able to close in on these double shooters a bit quicker. Of course, they're going to have to make sure the war boss isn't between them. So Tex going for an early aggressive push right here, taking the double shooters, heading straight for that power across Sewell. It's just a straight shot, so it always pays to be aggressive on this map if you can get in on that power nice and quick. It certainly makes a difference. Hormigon's coming up behind the double shooters. Shooters kind of maneuvering around trying to get out of that, and they actually kind of got caught up there between the Hive Tyrant and the Terrain, buying the shooters a bit of additional time, and it might work out for Tex. Tex now with triple shooters on the field, Two Termagants and two Hormagants for Floyd. So uh, quite a few squads on the field already. Both players going for a bit of a heavy tier one. Tex getting a nice special attack down on those Termagants and chasing the Hormas around as he has Slugga support now. And it looks like Tex is going to be definitively winning. Oh, another perfect stomp right there. And the Hormagants in a lot of trouble. They're going to get out of there with a few members, but a definitive victory there for Texanius. Has his third shooter up on the top of the map too. Or sorry, has his third shooter down here. Floyd has his fourth squad up there on the top of the map, capping everything right now. But Tex is going to probably be able to take out this power node. Or sorry, the power cap right there. No generators up right now. Tex already falling behind in BPs though. And that's going to be tricky to come back from against Tyranid. Of course, they are infamous for just being able to swarm the map early game and really control the VPs. So already being down 100 VPs just in this first engagement here is going to make it probably a little tricky for Tex to come back. Tex now going a fourth shooter boy, um, maybe trying to negate some of that map control. He hasn't built any power at all yet, just going straight for manpower, or I guess orc power. And between all these different squads on the field, we're going to have to see who can really get control of the map here. Tex down to just kind of these last few points here at the bottom, down to about 370 to 500. Finally evens out the VP bleed, but Hormagons are going to push off his final shooter boy squad and take the map back pretty easily right here. 
So Tex isn't really behind in power or anything like that, luckily. He's managed to keep Floyd's power down until just now. He did cause some damage down here, and Floyd didn't want to put those generators up until he was sure he could push the orcs back because he could simply just lose them to all those big shooters right there. Two squads of big shooters right now. And that's it so far. I'm not sure if he's going for all four or maybe just the couple. It's going to be 80 power if he wants all four of those big shooters, so I doubt he'd go for that much, especially considering he still doesn't have any generators up. Hive Tyrant has a Psychic Shield now, which means he's going to be able to charge at those Shooter Boys a lot more easily. Hormogon's getting torn up, though, trying to focus down those two Slugger Boys squads, but couldn't quite do it. Oh, sorry, the Shooter Boys. I'm getting all mixed up this game already. There's just too many squads out on, on the field for me to keep track of. Four squads of Shooter Boys and a Slugger Squad. That's... A pretty ridiculous tier one. Tex, or Tex did manage to take out one of the Horma squads, so that's going to be a, a boon in his favor right there. But he still just doesn't have any power out, and he's going to start falling behind pretty badly here, unless he can get something out there. Of course, against Tyranid, it's not really as big of a deal because they don't normally bring a light vehicle or anything like that onto the field. But honestly, if Floyd were to go tier two right now and bring out a quick Tyrant Guard, uh, that might be a big problem for Tex. Of course, the war boss can get his claw, and the claw is very threatening to a Tyrant Guard, but with both the Hive Tyrant and the ty Tyrant Guard out there, uh, it could be an interesting play. Of course, a Zone Throp is also an obvious go-to, uh, considering there's four Shooter Boy squads out on the field, and you're likely to see them all blobbed up just like they are right now. Two Termers trying to focus down that... War boss, but that Hive Tyrant just couldn't take the fire from three squads of Shooter Boys. A quick Venom shot saves that Hive Tyrant's behind and manages to get him back to base in one piece. And in the meantime, it looks like Tex is just using one of his Shooter Boys unupgraded as a capping squad and using the other three as an offensive forward line. Slug is putting a Wog banner up there, trying to get some consistent Wog on the field. And Termagant's now trying to come out and face off against all these shooters, but they're really not going to be able to do anything on their own. The Hive Tyrant needs to get up there and get an engagement going. Warrior's now on the field. Floyd's trying to figure out how to approach this because that is just so much range damage right now. Hive Tyrant probably needs his charge. Get the extended care piece upgrade and really just get in there, knock the shooter boys over, and that'll buy some time to get the Hormagons in there. And now we have some Barb Strangler Warriors on the field as well. All he needs to do is keep that high, uh, war boss away, and he can take care of that pretty easily. War boss traps a stomp right here, trying to keep the melee off of him, buying time for those sluggers to maybe get in there and do something. But everything is suppressed and taken some pretty nasty damage from the barb stranglers. There goes our boys on the slugger boys. Shooter's getting very low, but the slugger's tearing up those hormigons, trying to take them out down to a couple members. They have to fall back. and two shooter squads remain. In the meantime, however, though, with Tex being able to commit such a large force down here to threaten Floyd's power farm, he's managed to take the entirety of the top of the map here with that lone capping squad. And Floyd is heading up there into tier two. Floyd had to invest a lot in the warriors and his basic gaunt squads to kind of keep Tex from completely destroying that farm, however. And Tex really isn't going to be too far behind in Tier 2. He's going to be able to head into Tier 2 any second now, and only going to be like half the tech behind there. So 30 seconds or so isn't going to make too major a difference, especially against Tier Nid, as I mentioned. Hive Tyrant kind of just sitting here taking damage from the basic Shooter Boy squad. Unupgraded, they're really not going to do too much against that Hive Tyrant with his Psychic Shield. But oh no, here comes a huge barrage from the other three big shooter squads, but they are right in range of those Barb Strangler Warrior Broods. The cool thing about Barb Strangler Warrior Broods, I believe in Elite Mod as well now, is that you can upgrade them to Adrenal Glands after the fact now, so that doesn't lock you in to the uh, to the suppression anti-ranged that the Warrior Broods have. Broodness dropped here in the back, gonna be trying to do some constant reinforcement while trying to whittle down these shooter boys. Warboss looks like he just upgraded to his boss pole right there. 
keeping a little less oppression and giving some bonus HP to the surrounding squads. 293 to 428. Tex is starting to bring it back. He did get some excellent map control there after that last big push. Zone Thorpe coming onto the field for Floyd now, though, and that's probably going to be a big trouble for all these shooter boys. Hive Tyrant charging in, but look at his HP just disappearing as that shield drops down to nothing. Three squads of big shooters is nothing to be afraid. <laughs> nothing to snark at. Big Shooters have gotten their damage adjusted a bit in the mod, of course. They're not quite as DPS heavy as they were previously. Warboss getting right in there, hitting the stop, and then instantly hitting retreat. And with that spawning pool down, all the Tyranids have to fall back. I know it's not called a spawning pool, I, I forgot there in the, in the moment. Had a little StarCraft 2 moment there, so pardon me. Sluggas and Shooters now trying to eliminate one or two more generators if they can there before the Zone Throw and Hive Tyrant force them off. Hive Tyrant now upgraded with his Rending Talons, which gives him the Seismic Roar ability. Again, I feel like he kind of wants that extended carapace to get a charge in there against all this range, but we'll have to see what he goes for. Orc Truck now coming onto the field, have a big quick transport there. Truck's been increased in price just a little bit there in the Elite mod. And here comes another Broodnest. Floyd just always leaving that hot turn up there to tank away. Tex is doing a great job. Observe how he's making sure that he's keeping these shooter boys all spread out here. And not bothering to reinforce them too much because he knows that zone throw is just going to do more damage if there's more units on the field. And Shooter Boys, when they're upgraded with their big shooters, really a huge percentage. I forget what the percentage of their damage is, but it's well over 50% of their damage comes from just the two models with the big shooters. So you don't have to keep Shooter Boy squads maxed out in their population to do uh, uh, most of their damage. That's kind of one of the big complaints that a lot of people have about Shooter Boys, is even as you whittle them down, their DPS just drops uh, very minimally. So Truck's moving in, Shooter Boys over on the left, and Truck's moving in full of Slugger Boys, I'm sure. That's why it's going straight after that zone throw. And instead deciding now to hit Reckless, of course, Swamp them no longer negates suppression. It does reduce their damage and gives them a speed boost now, but the suppression, as you can see, still locks them down. Everyone hops back inside the truck as the zone throw starts firing from range again. And Tex couldn't quite break that Tyranid line this time. Works falling back to reinforce. 251 to 403. Floyd's turning it back around as he's gaining the map control back here and stalling Tex out there at that bottom engagement. With that brood nest out, he can kind of just lose t lose Gaunts and Gants and then just fall back, reinforce, and stay out there. The brood nest and the zone throw have both had their healing uh, AOE increased a little bit, so all the squads around them will be healing pretty nicely passively, so long as they kind of stick around that part of the map. So 2-0 cap against Tex. Tex still losing VPs, bleeding down. He's going to be down by about 200 VPs here shortly. Venom Brutes now on the field to threaten this truck along with the Zone Throw. Zone Throw gets a quick warp shot off at the wrong time, and that truck's going to be in a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, Warboss just goes over there with the Power Claw and smashes that Brood Nest to the ground. Tex trying to even out those VPs with so many orc squads. The second he pushes Floyd back like this, he's just taking the entirety of the map. And I really think that's what he was going for, is knowing that if he could just hold Floyd back and stall for just a few extra seconds any time he pushes him back during these engagements, he can really just spread out his squads and take everything back. 3-0 cap now suddenly for Tex. Tex also upgrading the knobs. As I was mentioning, the Shooter Boy knobs have gotten some of their damage that used to be on the big shooters put onto the knob. So you really need both upgrades to maximize the big shooter damage these days. Here comes a giant pile of mid-range forces obliterating that quick squad. Oh, trying to get a kill on the shooter boys. He does take it out there with one final seismic roar. Stalled him out there. 
Tex has a weird boy on the field now, though, which will be great for trying to deal with these these piles of Tyranids. Of course, Zap is basic attack and War Vomit, all great at dealing with these blobs of infantry. However, he is pretty far behind on tech at this point. Floyd's going to be heading into tier 3 here shortly as soon as he realizes he has the resources for it. And Tex really isn't going to have anything at the moment to deal with a Carnifex or anything like that. Slug is in the retreat path. This zone throws in a lot of trouble. It needs to get out of there. Those Barb Stranglers need to suppress those Slugger boys. They get a quick knockdown. I don't think that zone throw is going to be getting out of there. Warp Vomit goes off and slows down a lot of the Tyranid forces. Hive Tyrant getting beat up by the War Boss, pounding away with him with that Power Claw. In the meantime, Slug is kind of indifferent at the time, trying to figure out what they want to go after. Getting reinforced by the truck, just barely in range for that. And the War Boss is going to be able to engage those Venom Brutes and push it off in a perfect engagement by Tex right there. Managed to take out that zone throw, which was a major thorn in his side. And in the meantime, that capping shooter boy squad constantly going around and grabbing the map wherever it can. Tex still losing VPs, but slowly closing the gap here, trying to keep it down, but Floyd only needs to hold out until he can get a couple big Carnifexes or tier 3 units on the field, and he can really hurt Tex's feelings. Tex still a good ways off from tier 3. Slugger, or his, his third squad of Shooter Boys now getting upgraded, realizing he's going to need that extra firepower to kind of hold off these Tyranids. And not afraid to invest more in his Shooter Boys now that that zone throw is off of the field. Floyd kind of prodding forward, seeing where the Orc forces are. Tex is really all spread out up here though, so there's no reason he shouldn't be able to push this truck and try to get it off the field. Floyd just needs to buy himself a little more time here. Hive Tyrant now upgraded with his improved Synapse. Interesting choice. Don't see that too often these days. Almost always see the extended carapace or the box bonded exoskeleton. I know those are the ones that frustrate me the most. But now here comes Tex in force. Moving that moving the war boss back behind the line. Trying to make sure he keeps that separated from the rest of his squads. Keeping very well spread out and trying to minimize the effectiveness of that Barb Strangler. Big Stomp goes off. Entire Tyranid army decides to retreat right there. Hive Tyrant goes in for a quick seismic roar and then falls back. In the meantime, it looks like Floyd's power farm is going to be in peril here. Tex is going to be able to take the map once again and probably do some damage to this power farm. With so many orc squads on the field, he's really doing a great job of outswarming the Tyranid forces. Warboss goes in and allows the Weird Boy to get a quick zap off right there. Warboss takes a spore mine, he gets suppressed and has to fall back, and now Tex is just stalling out as long as he can in front of his base with that Weird Boy. Dropped a Ward Vomit, managed to take out a couple generators with his Slugger Boys in the meantime, and then just falls back with the Weird Boy, taking no bleed or loss at all. So pretty nice stall right there. A 3-0 cap. Tex bringing the match right back into his favor. Hormagon still running around trying to cap. Floyd needs to do something to get out here and just hold for a little while. Because Tex is bringing the map control severely back in his favor. You can see Floyd is down to just his natural power farm and wreck and 1 VP. With this orc truck on the field just been riding around uncontested. There's just not much he can do to stop that. Floyd is in tier 3 though. Tex has managed to not fall behind too much. There's that Tyranid Global, the capillary tower right there being spawned. It gives, I believe, a speed and damage, maybe even a health regeneration bonus to all the units around it. And uh, as long as it stays up, it's also generating extra biomass, extra red for the Tyranid army. So I thought that was a pretty cool play. Nice use of over there, and it might pay off because those sluggers might just take out that... Oh no! Not a single one takes a swing! After such a nice play there with the weird boy over there tossing those sluggers into the retreat path. And all those sluggers were kind of just out to lunch on that one. Tex 
Tech's doing a good job staking a lot on the map control of four shooter boys and paying off in spades after losing the one spot. He's still got three on the field. Hive Tyrant in a lot of trouble. This time the Slugger boys wake up. They knew with the war balls standing over them watching them, they weren't going to be able to get away with slacking off this time around. And man, Slug has almost taken out those Termagants as well. Warboss tosses a quick one over his shoulder, not concerned with crunchy bugs. But there is a Carnifex on the field, and the only thing Tex really has to deal with it right now is his Warboss. Weird Boy can take some shots at it too, but really not going to be able to do much overall against the Carnifex. So these Shooter Boys are really just pretty much going to have to fall back. Floyd has to do something though, this is probably his last chance to push with this Carnifex. He's down to under 100 VPs with a 2-0 cap against him, and knobs are coming onto the field for Tex. So he's going to have to cause some sort of damage here to the Orc player, or else this Carnifex is just going to get beat up by knobs and the war boss. Oh man, and there goes the Hive Tyrant masticating a Shooter Boy, and then tossing the desecrated corpse over his shoulder. Man, that Carnifex is getting fed good already. And look at Tex again flanking behind these Venom Cannon Warriors. Slugger Boy's taken out at least one of those here. Looks like it might just be the one. Shooter Boy's not really looking to kill Warriors too much. 3-0 cap though, however, against Floyd. A quick turnaround here by Tex after being down by about 200 VPs. Floyd is super stressed to take a point here. Not much time left. VP sticking down. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Not with the weird boy there denying the cap. There are still slugger boys up here on the field with the truck though. And Tex has just not relinquished control of the field for the second half of the game at all. Warrior squad goes down and the last couple of VPs tick away as there's no chance for Floyd to take any map. And wow, there we go. Tex showing once again, going a kind of peculiar build, but making it pay off. Floyd, uh, a very nasty Tyranid player. I was watching him play some Elite Mod yesterday, and I think he went five or six games before he finally lost one. But Tex coming in with four Shooter Boys and, uh, and just holding map. So hope you guys enjoyed the match. Again, if you guys are looking to check out some Elite Mod, there's no better way than just to go download it. Go check out the Grey Knights for yourself, then play some games, and send them my way. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Feel free to comment on the game, my commentary, player strategies, whatever you want. I always appreciate it. This is Red Ruby. I'll catch you guys next time.